Okay, well, I think that we can get started. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. My name is Chris Cicio. I'm the director here at Penn State Abington's Continuing Education Department. And on behalf of our Continuing Education Department, we welcome you to today's Project Management Certificate Program Lunch and Learn. Uh, here at Penn State Abington Continuing Education, we have three focus areas. We focus on professional development, uh, which is like this, the project management certificate. We also provide custom training for organizations, and we also have youth and community programs. I am joined today by my colleague, Robin. Uh, thank you, Robin, for being here. Robin also helps to oversee the project management certificate program. So if you have any questions now or in the future, uh, if you do decide to enroll in the program, you always can reach out to myself or Robin for support throughout the program. Um, registration questions, enrollment questions, um, financial questions, content questions, we're here to support you uh, from the start and throughout the program and afterwards as well. I also just want to tell you that we are also joined by our fabulous instructors today, and you'll be hearing from them uh, in just a couple of minutes, and they're really going to go in depth into what the program entails and a little bit more about the curriculum and content so you understand what to expect if you do decide to register for the program. So just a quick program overview, the project management certificate program run through Penn State Abington prepares students for careers in planning and business fields, and it really can be applied to a wide variety of industries and fields, um, and is a growing field as well. Uh, and in the program, you're going to learn practical application of the concepts learned. And that is because you will be learning directly from subject matter experts working in the field, working professionals. And with that, I am pleased to introduce our three instructors that teach the four classes in the Project Management Certificate Program. Michael Faya, who has 20 years of experience in product and project management. He is currently the project management lead at Jazz Pharmaceuticals. We also are joined by Michael Osborne, who currently leads the supply chain portfolio at Johnson & Johnson OTC Consumer. And last but not least, we are joined by Don Baines, who is the director of strategic business improvements at Janssen Biotech Johnson & Johnson. Uh, so I am so pleased that they were able to join us today, and I am thrilled that these three are the instructors in this program because they bring a wealth of knowledge, um, a vast uh, base of knowledge, and they are really dedicated to sharing their skills and expertise with students to ensure your success throughout the program and also to advance your careers. With that, I am going to turn it over to Michael Faya to talk about the first course a little bit more in depth and what students can expect by enrolling in the program. Certainly, thank you. Um, so I have the pleasure of teaching the first course in this four, program, four course uh, certification program. I've been teaching it now for probably about what the last eight years. So uh, good news is nobody's a guinea pig. We've sort of figured out what works that so we constantly try to make adjustments and plays. So what is project initiation and planning? Uh, as you can see, the four courses are lined up as you would probably execute a project. And in fact, we have you guys work, work through either a live work project or a hypothetical uh, project scenario throughout the four courses. So you'll hand things off from my class to Michael's class to Don's class. We start by setting the tone. How do you establish a project? Creating something known as a project charter and then using that to guide your project through. We also, uh, in the first course, it's a little bit of a history lesson on why project management is important, as well as uh, peppering in the different type of organizational structures and how they may impact how you manage a project. So by the time you run to the end of project initiation and planning, you will have a project charter, hopefully approved and uh, present it uh, to our sort of pseudo governance board uh, to take into the schedule and integration class. So we teach uh, through a variety of methods. Obviously you'll hear me and my examples. Uh, we will leverage the class because you heard a lot, of, a lot of strong backgrounds in the pharmaceutical industry like 
right with the three instructors. So we'll pull from the class. We'll use some case studies. And as I mentioned, that really that pivotal project that you work through all four courses is critical. So I'll turn things over to Michael to explain scheduling and integration. Yeah, thanks, uh, Michael. So as Michael had mentioned, one of the kind of consistent elements through each of these four courses is that project that uh, the groups will take on and advance through the different phases of a project. So within the scheduling and integration uh, module, we will focus a lot on identifying stakeholders and then customizing engagement and communication strategies that are appropriate for them, all within the context of that project that you work through each of the four classes. We then get into identifying the project scope. We use a tool called a work breakdown structure. What I think is really neat about this is it's applicable if you're a project manager or project leader in your kind of day-to-day -day responsibilities, but it's also really valuable if you participate in projects. So I think a common theme across all four of these classes is it doesn't necessarily require you to be a project manager or in a project management role. I think there are a lot of tools, techniques, um, and lessons that can be learned in these classes that you can bring back to your, you know, your daily uh, responsibilities, even if they sit outside of traditional project management. Um, in the scheduling and integration, we get into building out a project schedule. So we identify scope, we build a schedule, we go through some different scheduling techniques to optimize that schedule to understand if we can reduce cost or time or risk from that schedule. And then we start going into general resource planning. So now that we've got a project schedule that identifies hopefully all of the scope required to deliver our project, uh, we go into the, uh, the network planning and resource estimating, which then dovetails nicely into the next course, which is cost and control. So I'll hand it over to Don. Thanks, can you guys hear me now? Okay. So as Michael said, um, you know, the course I teach is cost management. And there we actually focus on looking at what's needed from a cost perspective. So you have the scope, the time, and the cost. So you, you go through the scope with a planning for the first course, second course, a lot of how you actually do some of the initiating. And, and well, the first course is initiation, the second course is scheduling, the third course is now making sure that the cost associated with running the project is stays on track and that you're monitoring that. So some other things we kind of focus on is program management, cost and controls. We go through different tools that you use within that uh, framework. We talk about contracts, uh, procurement, and different things that you would actually use to make sure that as you're running your project, uh, things are running on track and there's no overage in terms of uh, scope or any um, financials that are needed. A big piece of that is to me is actually making sure that throughout all the courses we actually do that where it's not just learning the tools and going over the theoretical pieces of it, but actually having the discussions. And I know for the last two class, especially as we switch from in person to Zoom, what was good was that we were able to have people come in with real life problems or situations that they have on the job. And then would actually work through and have discussions as a team in terms of providing thoughts um, and input to how those can actually be resolved. Another key piece, as was mentioned before, too, is also the group project that we work on because that goes from the beginning to the end. So by the time you get to the last course, we actually have a chance to see the different tools and um, techniques utilized within the projects. The last class, um, as I've mentioned, is the risk and change management. Of course, for every project, a big piece of that is always risk, right? How you manage risk, how you make sure that you have a process to identify risk, how you mitigate them, or if you need to accept them, how you, you actually work through that. So we get into a lot of real life examples uh, again with that, and also have people bring in um, different discussion points. Uh, one of the good things about the program, and at least, for the last few years has been that we've had a 
broad cross section of people from different industries. So there's also X amount of learning that really comes from that as well, um, which you know is beneficial to the overall program. It was mentioned before that we have a lot of pharma experience. I've actually been doing project management since 1998, so I guess almost 24 years now. Um, the first part of my career was actually um, in the engineering field, so I bring a lot of experience from that area as well. And the last 15 years has been in pharma, but working across different global, regional, and across different functional areas. So we have a lot of real-life examples that we bring to the discussion. and. Um, and also, of course, the, the networking that happens within the course. So that's it in terms of rounding off the four uh, courses uh, within the program. Thank you, Michael, Michael, and Don. Um, and when students complete this four course certificate program through Penn State Abington, uh, they earn 84 professional development units, which can be applied toward the project management professional credential through the Project Management Institute. Uh, and upon successful completion of the four courses, students will also receive a Penn State Abington Project Management Certificate. Uh, I'm going to just turn it back over to the instructors because I know that each of you have earned your PMP. So can you talk a little bit more about how the transition is from completing the four courses to then earning the PMP? What needs to be done before you earn your PMP? Certainly, and uh, unless anybody objects, I'll get started here. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, the PMI, the Project Management Institute, offers several certifications. Uh, they've actually uh, expanded their offerings quite a bit over the last few years. Though the, the gold standard when it comes to recognition for project management is this PMP certification. In order to sit for the, the exam, so even before any activities can be done and worry about obtaining it, you need to present both hours of education in regards to project management, as well as time served as either a project manager or as uh, you know, project team members. So the good news is upon completing of this program, those 84 hours are more than enough to get you over the hump for that certificate or the education requirement. So then it's just a matter of if you have not already uh, completed, completing the uh, requirements uh, from a professional experience standpoint. Certifications, you can then apply online. Uh, it requires you to fill out and sort of verify these PDUs as well as your educate or your professional experience. And then you have a, you know, a year to sort of schedule your exam. Uh, so the good news is while we do not teach to the exam, this is not a boot camp type course. We wanna make sure that we, we provide you general project management skills as Don mentioned, it is not a here's just the tool and, and that's it. It's going to be a balanced approach. Uh, we do find and we've had asked students and have received very positive feedback on those that after completing the class, being able to then go forth and sit for the exam and pass the exam. Uh, so it really is a little bit dependent on the student, their experience, how comfortable they are with the materials. We do, as a text for the course, require you guys to use the PMI Book of uh, Project Management Book of Knowledge, uh, PMBOK, which is uh, the, the background and, and sole material for the exam. So between what you'll learn in class, and then if you'd like to sort of continue and read upon uh, the text provided for the class, you can go for and sit. Again, uh, some of our students have opted to take a boot camp refresher just to try to drive through. What we find is PMI very much, it's like learning another language. You're probably using it in the same contact at work, but maybe slightly different. I know, for example, my time at J&J &J and AstraZeneca, we had a project charter and, you know, sort of everything is in the charter. When you go to PMI, most of that was included in the charter, but they also have maybe a business case document or something else. So we'll deliberately use that language in class. So as I said, this is not a boot camp. This is not something that we sort of teach purely to PMI. However, we do or we are selective in our language so that you're picking up those details so that you can just walk right into the exam if you wanted to. And yeah, nothing you know, else to oh, add. Go ahead. Apart from just to say, you know, I did my PMP in 2005, but before I did that, I actually did a course similar to this uh, just to get familiar with the project management concepts because I happen to 
have been put in a role where as a project manager without any kind of formal training. So on my own, I did a certificate program and that just kind of helped me as I thought about um, the next steps with doing the, the PMI exam, which I did do a boot camp and so on. But the foundation was kind of set from doing a certificate course uh, similar to this one. Thank you, that's helpful. And we do also offer a PMP exam prep course. Um, so if it is something that students are interested in taking after the completion of the education, the 84 educational hours, that is an option as well. And we just wanted to touch upon the program benefits. Michael talked about how the PMP is sort of the gold standard among in the industry of for project management. Um, so the program benefits include enhanced skills and knowledge, which which makes you more marketable to employers because you can show your competencies and your skills related to project management. And of course, by earning this and with it being the gold standard, um, if you earn your PMP, there is more likely to be more career opportunities and potentially increased earning potential as well. Um, do you have anything additional to add, Michael, Michael and Don, about the benefits of the program and what is most valuable about taking it? Yeah, so the one piece I'd add is, and I think I touched on it a bit before, was just the practical um, application of the, the, the concepts, the tools, et cetera. Um, we actually had a, um, one of my classes two years ago, and there was someone who was in the construction industry, and part of what they actually did was they had a, they had a, literally it was like a pen and paper type change management process. Uh, but there was no repeatability in terms of how they did things from project to project. And we, after seeing the project uh, flow that we had from a cost management perspective, he actually took that as a template and um, used it in one of his meetings uh, in between classes and actually came back to the class, the next class, and kind of shared with us that I guess his boss thought this was really cool because it, you know, they kind of went from having an informal, uh, way of doing things, so I'm a formal one. And another example was there was this person who was doing, she worked, uh, she did like project management on the West Coast with different um, clients. But the way she set up her project schedule was literally, she would go in with a fixed project uh, scope and tied in the cost to that. So there are times when she actually made money. Um, but there are times when the scope changed and because she didn't really have a, a good change management process, she actually lost money. So we kind of talked through that, gave her um, a couple of templates. We kind of, you know, worked through that, had class discussions. And she said moving forward, she was actually able to use that for any prospective clients that she had. So, um, you know, she wasn't kind of getting caught out on, on um, you know, from, from a financial perspective. So. Again, there's the tools, the techniques, the PMP and PMI, all of that. But then there's a piece where literally like the next day, depending on what your need may be, you'll have tools that you can actually apply in your day-to-day -day job. Yeah, and to build on that, I think, as Don mentioned, there are a number of tools and processes that I think are directly applicable for you to take back, whether you're in a traditional project management role or you sit in a function and maybe you're supporting a project. Um, and to that end, we've heard a lot of feedback from students that have not been a, a formal project manager, but they brought a few of those processes or tools back and either got into a project management track within their organization as a result, or certainly were recognized as having that project management acumen, even though they didn't um, hold that formal job title. So I would say if you are a project management or, or project management professional or in the project management field, I think we'll provide this course provides some really practical tools to bring back that probably supplement what you'll learn in the PMBOK, right? So translate kind of the theory in the PMBOK to practical things that you can bring back into your organization and deliver value. But then also, if you're not in that formal project manager role, you're asking the right questions, right? You're familiar with the lingo uh, and you're perhaps bringing tools to help supplement what your organization might currently utilize.
Thank you. That's very helpful. So at this point, we are going to open it up to questions from our audience members. And I want to thank our instructors and my colleague, Robin, for joining us today. Uh, but you can drop any questions that you might have into the chat or the Q&A. But I will get started with a question that comes up sometimes, and you've touched upon it a little bit about maybe being a formal project manager or having or serving on a project team. If somebody doesn't have experience in projects, would you recommend that they gain professional experience first before enrolling in this program? I can take that. Um, my personal opinion is it is not a prerequisite, right? Whether or not you have a formal project experience in your professional sense, um, you may or may not write, but certainly personally, right? I'm sure people have managed a project, whether they called it a project or not, you know, getting married, a home renovation, right? So all of these processes and tools are broadly applicable and, and you may have used you know, an informal uh, technique or process in your own personal life. So I, I struggle to find someone who hasn't managed a project of some sort, whether in a personal or professional capacity, uh, that couldn't benefit and certainly relate to a lot of the tools and processes that we'll cover. Yeah, nothing much to add to that, but to say um, we had one person who was in one of our last classes, and I think she worked at a rent -a car company, and she really just dealt with customers, um, you know, when they returned their cars and kind of setting up stuff so that they were able to track certain things. And she was able to actually take some of the tools from um, what we taught and, and actually use that within her, uh, within her job as well. And she had no project management training. So just echoing and agreeing 100% with what Mike just said. Thank you. And another question that we have that I can just take is, I know that we had mentioned the textbook for the class and we always are asked if the tuition includes that and it does not, that is an additional expense that the student is responsible for, for paying for, for the book. Um, that's really valuable information and supports the work throughout the program. And another question that we have that came in is, do you need a degree prior to taking these courses? Is that a prerequisite? Absolutely not. And, uh, you know, again, if I, to go back to the, to the benefits of the program, what I've seen uh, is more and more role, every role has some aspect of project management, either directly stated or otherwise. And so um, we encourage anybody to, to hop on and some of the most successful project managers I've worked with and are currently working for me do not have degrees. Uh, can't say the hiring trend is going to stay that way or, or how that may be, but I can certainly say that uh, I would not I would not hold anybody back because the experience is broad and, and important. And I agree with that. I think that a lot of employers are taking part in skills-based hiring and looking at cert practical certifications um, when they're looking at hiring or career traje trajectory as well. So that's something that we want to keep in mind too, that um, building skills and competencies is really important to employers. And I can't predict the future, but it's definitely been one of the trends um, in the recent years. Another question that we have is, you know, a lot of students that come into these certificate programs have not been to school in a long time, so it can be daunting to think about going back to class. Can you talk a little bit about the assignments? Are there quizzes or exams that you take in each class? Can you talk a little bit about um, the activities that the students participate in during class? Yeah, I mean, so, I'll, go ahead. So what I say is, uh, first, that would should not be a deterrent. Um, one of the things, you know, I went back to school a couple of different times, and one of the things I realized for myself was I learned better, especially as I got older, from just the discussions, the networking, the discussing the practical examples, et cetera. So we do 
break people up into projects and people might have different uh, different members might have different um, aptitudes just based on their experiences or where they are. But overall, you know, like I learned a lot from one of the previous classes where the person was in construction and he he kind of worked with, I guess, the, some union within Philadelphia and the examples, the, the, the issues that he came up with and so on really helped drive a lot of the class discussions and everyone jumped in. So it definitely would not be something that should should be an issue with someone regardless of how long you haven't um, done any formal education or classes. Yeah, just to, to add to that, I think we and, and I'll, I'll, I'll thank my, Michael for this one here is we've tried to design the program uh, to limit the outside of class work uh, purely just because we know it's a, it's a working professional target. Uh, that being said, yeah, occasionally you're, you're probably going to have to do some reading ahead of time. Uh, we do have a group project, but we provide time in class. So a lot of the discussions that Don just mentioned are done in class. And, uh, you know, it can be a lot of times we'll come in, we'll do a little bit of a lecture, and then we'll talk about it. So that discussion piece, and you, it really is leveraging your experience and what you've just heard. Um, there are some requirements in order to get that certification. Uh, I know, uh, I think we all have a open book test that uh, we have for the end of each program. Uh, I have not had anybody fail it yet, right? I think, yeah, probably have to try pretty hard <laughs> to, not, to, to not pass that portion of it. We do have presentations and other things. Um, and really, we, we gear it towards the skill sets you're going to need as a project manager. And yeah, if you're not the best at presenting in front of a class virtually or otherwise, you may be a little uncomfortable, uh, but it is a skill that we want you to practice. I have students read and write, uh, you know, a feedback based on a case study. I know writing may not be something, formal writing may not be something people want to do, but, uh, you know, we do, we do have those, but we do provide time in class, uh, especially around those discussions and other elements so that you won't be overwhelmed. I said, I can't say you'll have zero outside of work class, uh, but you won't be at the point where you're having to find 15, you know, 10, 15 hours outside of class to cover all the homework ahead of the next class. I think that that's a great point. Um, since our continuing education department caters to adult learners and working professionals, we really understand that people are balancing school, work, likely a home life as well. And we want to make sure that people can balance that and earn their education um, while also navigating their other competing responsibilities too. And we're always here to support students too. So um, students can always reach out to Robin or me if you have any questions or need additional support. And we provide um, sessions, career advisement sessions. We just did one this week about tips to navigate the modern job search. Um, so we try to provide additional support to our students during the program and after the program too. Um, we sometimes are able to work with you to review resumes or talk about interview tactics too. So we want to make sure that we're setting you up with the knowledge from the classes, but also the resources that you need to advance your careers and apply to jobs and, and get that next role that you're looking to get. With that, I think that we just have one final question about financial assistance, um, because this is a program with a cost to it, and it's always something that people are, are thinking about and trying to navigate that too. Um, since this is a non-credit program, this uh, program is not eligible for financial aid. But I'm pleased to say that by attending today's Lunch and Learn session, you're eligible for 10% off the registration fees for the fall classes. Uh, so you can contact me or Robin for that code if you do decide to register. And with that, I think that that brings us to the end, uh, unless anybody has any final words or anything else that anybody wants to add. I will say inevitably questions come up as soon as you leave, right? You hit the end button. And so just email Christina Robin, they'll get them to us. We'll be happy to answer them. Um, I think, again, I'm biased here. You're talking to three project managers, but it's a very growing field. Yes. We, you know, my company has struggled to hire enough and keep up with the requirements there because of the skills required. Uh, it's also one where I feel you use the practical values of it regardless of whether you end up in a project management role or not so uh, 
please again bring on the questions we'll, we're here till one but if not feel free to email them afterwards thank you so thank you to my to my co-presenters i greatly appreciate you taking the time to be with us today and like michael said please do not hesitate to reach out to us um via email uh if you have any additional questions that come up afterwards Thank you. And we Thanks. hope that everybody has a fantastic day. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.